everyone. Welcome aboard Dragon. Uh, my name is Doug. Next to me is uh, Bob. You probably know him. We're so glad to be with you uh, this evening and uh, welcome you on board uh, Dragon. Got a couple uh, things we want to talk about first before we kind of show you around. The first is uh, kind of a tradition we've had uh, over the years with spacecraft going way back to the uh, Mercury era. Uh, and then a tradition that's been carried on ever since with uh, all our space vehicles, including the Soyuz. Uh, we uh, were, were given the honor to name uh, this capsule. I know most of you uh, at SpaceX especially know it as Capsule 206, but uh, I think uh, all of us thought that we could maybe do a little bit better than that. So. Uh, without further ado, we would like to uh, welcome you aboard Capsule Endeavor. Uh, we chose Endeavor for a few reasons. One, because of this incredible Endeavor, uh, NASA, SpaceX, and the United States has been on uh, since the end of the shuttle program back in 2011. The other reason we named it uh, Endeavor is a little more personal to Bob and I. Uh, we both had our first flights on shuttle Endeavor, and uh, it just meant so much to us to carry on that name. Uh, that's what we decided to go with. So we hope you enjoy that name, and once again, welcome on board. Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome aboard Endeavour, the uh, SpaceX vehicle headed to the International Space Station. Uh, today, we accomplished the first flight off the Florida coast in uh, quite some time, and Doug and I were really proud to have an opportunity to be a part of that. Uh, we're doing it in a brand new uh, spaceship, a spaceship that's a lot different than its namesake uh, Endeavour, the space shuttle, in that it has uh, touch display screens that allow us to accomplish most of the interfacing requirements that we have. We'll have of uh, Doug pans over and points at the display in front of me, you can see the, the forward view that we had uh, uh, during the maneuvers that we most recently did. You can look out the window. It looks like the centerline camera doesn't have a lot of content on it now. We're kind of pointed into space so that the windows can see the Earth below us. But we've got the capability to interface with the vehicle, and it's kind of interesting. There's a command. This little button over here is actually what the commands are for our displays. One thing that does get lost is there is a uh, extensive uh, button panel down below as well. So over on uh, this side, we can turn the displays on and off as well as send some commands for some contingency situations. Uh, on the other side, we have the ability to uh, deploy shoots and things like that on entry. So uh, we do have some buttons, but the primary interface is uh, these displays. So nice, new, modern cockpit that we've got for our, our uh, compared to our namesake, the Space Shuttle uh, Endeavor. I'm going to migrate a little bit away from from our seats here, and Doug from his seat is going to continue to try to follow me so you can tell what can be seen from the, the seat that he sits in. So from his seat, when he is inside the in the vehicle, strapped in, this is what his view actually looks like. You can see a, a window off to the one side. We each have a window that we can view out and, and see what's going on outside. That was exciting on Ascent for us to be able to see the the arm rotate away from the pad, and that's when we both, I think, knew that we were uh, going to launch today. So that was, that was super cool. I've got one on my side uh, as well. Uh, the hatch that we came in is the hatch that's uh, right behind me. It is a little bit of a tight quarters, uh, but I'm going to uh, try to uh, demonstrate some of the capability that we have now that we're in zero gravity. So I think I was requested to do a backflip. I'm going to kind of do a side spin, which is a little bit of a permutation on that request. So hopefully you can see what it's like to actually float in zero gravity. And uh, Doug and I are super excited that we got the opportunity to do this again today, uh, even before the end of May. So that was super cool. We did. It, in, it turns out end up with one stowaway on board our uh, vehicle when we launched today. It was not uh, uh, just Doug and I who uh, accomplished the launch here. We do have uh, an Apatosaurus aboard. We both have two boys uh, who are super interested in dining. 
and uh, we collected up all the dinosaurs between the two houses and Trimmer, the Apatosaurus, uh, got the vote from the boys to make the trip into space today with us. And so that uh, was a super cool thing for us to get a chance to do for both of our sons who I, I hope are super excited to see uh, their toy floating around with us on board. I'm sure they would rather be here uh, given the opportunity, but hopefully they're proud of this as well. Okay, uh, as we work our way towards one of the windows, uh, unfortunately it's getting a little bit dark, but uh, I don't know if Bob can pan over here. We're now, we just passed off of the coast of Newfoundland and we're headed over to, uh, or over the Atlantic right now. I don't know if you can uh, get a good picture of that. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoy that view um, as we pass over the Atlantic. And uh, I think with that, we will work ourselves back into the seats and uh, wrap things up for this evening. So Doug's there uh, making a nice big smile for the camera. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the trip today with us on board the uh, Dragon Capsule Endeavor with our friend Trimmer, the Apatosaurus, uh, and Doug and I. We just would like to uh, thank SpaceX, we'd like to thank NASA, and we'd like to thank the, uh, the American people for the opportunity today. And we're really proud of the entire team that was able to accomplish human space flight again from the Florida coast. Uh, just a wonderful experience. Uh, Doug and I are just so proud to be a part of it and just uh, want to thank uh, everybody who gave us uh, this opportunity and worked so hard uh, to make this happen today. So with that, uh, I think it'll be good night from Capsule Endeavor. Good night to everyone at NASA, at SpaceX, and the United States, and congratulations to the teams that got us into orbit. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, Chris Cassidy and uh, his Russian colleagues on board the International Space Station uh, tomorrow morning. Good night, Megan and T.O. And Karen and Jack. Good morning, everyone, from uh, Endeavor. We uh, had a great night uh, last night, got to get a little sleep, and uh, as you can see from the video, we are just passing over Saudi Arabia in the Middle East, a beautiful day pass right now, and uh, heading northeast up towards Central Asia, and then we'll work our way out the western western part of uh, the Himalayas there and work our way all the way out over, looks like Japan, out into the Pacific uh, for this particular pass. If you uh, look closely in the video, you can see just a sliver of moon. Uh, kind of halfway between the surface of the earth and the uh, window pane uh, as we're flying at about 17,500 miles an hour uh, around the planet. Getting pretty close to ISS. Uh, when we were in the uh, night part of this orbit, we actually got to see ISS out the window, which was pretty neat to see it for the first time on this trip. Bob's painting the camera back now, just kind of taking a look at around the uh, cabin just to see how things look after a uh, crew's lived in Dragon for uh, an evening. We uh, Last night, the way things went, we had our normal uh, activation, got out of our suits, had some uh, a little bit of dinner, then uh, reconfigured the cabin for uh, orbit ops, 
did a couple uh, other events, including the media event last night, and then we uh, proceeded to get ready for bed, which uh, in space takes takes a little bit longer uh, than I think uh, on planet Earth. Uh, we had to pull out sleeping bags and sleeping clothes and all those kinds of things got kind of cleaned up, and then uh, we ended up sleeping uh, just like we are right now, right in our chairs, which was actually a pretty comfortable night's sleep. One of the things we did uh, yesterday was actually manually fly Crew Dragon uh, for the first time, and uh, I want to compliment the teams. Uh, and Hawthorne, uh, just a spectacular job uh, with the simulator as the vehicle flew exactly like the simulators out in Hawthorne. So just want to thank the teams that did all the work on that uh, particular uh, training device as well as all the modeling in the GNC. It really worked out well and uh, was a joy to fly. And I'm guessing it was the first time a space vehicle was flown with a touchscreen before. So. We got that going for us. I'm going to hand the uh, mic over to Bob. Well, hello, folks. Uh, welcome aboard the Dragon Capsule Endeavor. Uh, Doug and I had a good night's sleep last night. Uh, we were surprised, I think, at how well we actually slept aboard the vehicle. A little bit quieter than uh, than space shuttle, a little bit more, I guess, environmentally controlled. So we had a, uh, didn't have CO2 pockets or things like that building up, giving us a congestion, which was uh, super awesome. He talked a little bit about the changing and going back and forth between our suits and our sleepwear and the clothes we're in now and uh, managing all those things. But we've managed to keep the ship uh, pretty tidy at this point as we went through the, the night's activities and then got into uh, our preparation for today. Uh, we did get our suits dried out, get them packed away into the uh, black bags that are stowed in the outboard seats. You can, if you look closely, you can see we've got them strapped it in with the the regular straps that you'd use for uh, riding into uh, orbit, and then over against uh, kind of that that former window location, there is a uh, you can see Doug's uh, sleep bag there uh, next to his uh, crew notebook, and so that's how we're keeping all of our our laundry constrained floating all around today. Doug mentioned the uh, manual flying and, and how well the uh, simulator matched that. Uh, I'll tell you that uh, for the ride uphill on Ascent, they just are never able to capture that at the simulator. And so I think uh, Doug and I were uh, talking about all the observations that we had all the way uphill um, while it was uh, an exciting ride. I think we got a, a couple of uh, minor surprises just in terms of the way the vehicle is kind of moving and, and shaking and uh, taking you into orbit, you can tell that it's uh, it's fighting against the Earth as it, uh, it makes it way, its way into space, and that's just something a simulator can never tr never truly simulate. Uh, we do have a, a friend on board with us. We introduced you to Trimmer yesterday uh, when we did our uh, little activity with the camera. Trimmer also had a good night's sleep. I know that uh, both of our sons are pretty happy about that uh, with their pet dinosaur making it into orbit. and and having a good night uh, in zero gravity. We plan, once we get on board the space station, to reunite uh, Trimmer with Earthy and plan to bring both of them back to Earth. I know that uh, we'll get Trimmer through the safety brief and get all the education that's required so that uh, uh, we'll have a, a safe operation while we're on board the uh, space station should anything come up that uh, we need to be prepared for. I know that Trimmer's also looking forward to helping us out with uh, EVA preparations uh, just in case we need to do a spacewalk, and so we're uh, looking forward to that as well. Two minutes until LOS. Let's see. I think we'll go ahead and bring the uh, camera out a little bit, and we'll show you uh, what's going on underneath the seats on board the 
Dragon Capsule Endeavor. We've got uh, uh, quite a bit of cargo that we'll be taking to the space station. We've got some hard racks as well. The uh, hard stowage that we have can also be swapped, these uh, hard containers here, for powered cargo, which lets us bring back refrigerated things from the International Space Station. And if you're super lucky, we don't have that this time, but I bet you some crew will take ice cream to the International Space Station with those. Uh, that'll be exciting for those crews to get to have that. We, we do have some uh, emergency equipment uh, labeled in red, which is uh, nice to have and easy to see, as, as well as the other stowage bags that we have uh, down here as well. Uh, I don't know if you were watching closely during our strap-in and uh, insertion on the on the pad, but uh, we did have the seats rotate at, at one point. We were down in a, a easier configuration to ingress the vehicle in, so when we climbed aboard, the seats were rotated down, and after we were strapped in, they rotated up. And our activities, and so those seats uh, will rotate again uh, in preparation for splashdown uh, when we eventually come home. So if any of you all know uh, Uncle uh, Kirk Shireman, as we call him, you could uh, ask him uh, when we're coming home and uh, make sure that uh, he starts having a plan for us. Appreciate you having them uh, coming on board again with us on Endeavor, and enjoy showing you around both inside and out. Uh, the next time uh, we'll be on video for you, we'll hopefully be on board. Chris Cass, in just hours. So we appreciate you stopping by and from Endeavor.